Like so many of us, this past Wednesday, I tuned in to watch President Joe Biden's inaugural High Holy Day sermon. January 1st may be New Year's Day, but every four years, Inauguration Day is Rosh Hashanah in America. Given the occasion, it was unsurprising that President Biden, like so many rabbis and presidents before him, wove theological themes into the fabric of his address. He cited Augustine. He quoted Psalms. But there was one allusion in particular that made me wonder whether he had taken a look at this week's Torah portion, Parshat Bo. He said, we must end this uncivil war that pits red against blue, rural versus urban, conservative versus liberal. We can do this if we open our souls instead of hardening our hearts. And these are the opening words of Bo. Then Adonai said to Moses, go to Pharaoh, ki ani hichbadeti et libo, for I have hardened his heart. This hardened heart is Pharaoh's infamous reaction to the ten plagues, the punishment God wreaks upon the Egyptians for enslaving our ancestors. It is the inner compass of a cruel king cast off course when confronted with the children of Israel's cries for freedom. There is, however, a modest theological problem here. Those first words of Bo tell us that God was the one responsible for turning Pharaoh's heart to stone. So how can we reasonably hold Pharaoh accountable for his intransigence? It seems like he didn't have a choice, except that he did many times. The rabbis observe that on five occasions prior to this episode, Pharaoh hardened his heart on his own without divine intervention. God gave him five chances to choose goodness. Dr. Aviva Zornberg teaches that it was because of Pharaoh's five-fold failure to do the right thing that he reached a point of no return, that he made himself obdurate and closed to all appeal from the outside world to such a point that his human autonomy ceased to act altogether. He no longer had the power to backtrack. Fortunately for us, as President Biden reminded us on Wednesday, we aren't Pharaoh. We still have the power to backtrack. We still have the power to open our souls. But how do we do this? What is the way? I heard a clue to the answer to this question in another notable line in President Biden's speech. The president exhorted us that politics doesn't have to be a raging fire destroying everything in its path. And his words made me think of this incandescent image from our Torah. In Deuteronomy, we read Adonai Elohecha Esh Ochlahu, Adonai, your God, is a raging fire. For so many years, our lives have traced a destructive trail blazed by an idolatrous inferno of partisan politics. We have been consumed by our country's political conflagration. And we have lost sight of the path illuminated by the eternal flame of God. So how do we find it again? The rabbis of the Talmud ask this same question. 
Rabbi, Sam, Rabbi Chama, son of Rabbi Hanina, asks, what is the meaning of the verse, after Adonai, your God, you shall walk? How is it possible to follow the divine presence? Don't we read that Adonai is a raging fire? How can one walk safely behind a raging fire? Rabbi Chama answers his own question. We follow God by emulating God's actions. Just as God clothes the naked by sewing garments for Adam and Eve, so too should we clothe the naked. Just as God visits the sick by appearing to Abraham as he heals from his circumcision, so too should we visit the sick. Just as God comforts mourners by blessing Isaac after Abraham's death, so too should we comfort mourners. And just as God buries the dead by tucking Moses into his grave in a valley in Moab, so too should we bury the dead. Rabbi Chama teaches us that God's greatness is God's goodness. And this is a message that we all need to hear right now. It is by following the example of God's goodness that we can soften our hardening hearts and open our souls. I'm not saying that we just have to move on. Fire, after all, is often a metaphor for anger, and yes, many of us are still angry. But fire doesn't have to be a metaphor for politics. In fact, when it is, we risk forging hearts of lead and incinerating our souls. Rabbi Chama enlightens us that each of us has the ability to light a small torch from the flames of God's goodness. We can clothe the naked, we can visit the sick, we can comfort the mourner, we can bury the dead. We can call, feed the hungry, we can call the lonely, we can welcome the stranger, we can smile on the subway behind our masks. Pharaoh hardened his heart, and he lost the power to choose. We still can. This Shabbat, let us choose the path illuminated by God's goodness. Let us open our souls to each other, and let us heed the parting words of a Rosh Hashanah sermon given by a different president a century and a half ago with malice toward none, with charity for all, with firmness in the right as God gives us to see the right. Let us strive on to finish the work we are in, to bind up the nation's wounds, to care for him who shall have borne the battle and for his widow and his orphan, to do all which may achieve and cherish a just and lasting peace among ourselves and with all nations. Shabbat Shalom.